Today's Bible uh, study is the last one in this uh, quarterly, uh, and it's called The Destiny of the Church. Um, again, I struggle some with the titles to these, uh, because reading the scriptures, I don't per se read The Destiny of the Church. Uh, the destiny of the church is to be witnesses. And what we'll talk about here is how um, you become maybe a member of the church, how membership of the church was reconciled, and the benefits from that. But us as our destiny on this earth is to be lights <coughs> to a lost and dying world. To be like the Good Samaritan. To be Christ-like. And they were first called Christians at Antioch because they were Christ-like. Amen. If you go to a church that teaches you to be anything other than Christ-like, I would suggest finding another church. Amen. If you go to a church that puts emphasis on man and being like a certain individual, I would suggest you've gone to a club or an organization for people to feel good about themselves. I will say as Christians, the closer you get to Christ, the more vile you will really see yourself as. You don't see yourself more holy the closer you get to the light. The closer you get to the light, the more you'll see the discrepancies in your own life. Amen. And the more you'll understand the dire necessity you have of what we're getting ready to talk about. So the destiny of the church, the key verse is, He that overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Amen. Revelation 21 and 7. Again, when we talk about he here, it is a general meaning of the word of a human. Uh, all my life growing up, Brother Mitchell going through school, he was a generic um, word that was used for mankind. It was not used to be derogatory toward women. Uh, but society today has tried to make it that way. This is not being gender specific. This is very much meaning mankind. All of us. He. All of us. Any one of us that overcomes. Amen. Shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son. Uh, pertinent principles if your destination is heaven this pretty good. Uh, Brother Mitchell talked about Sister Kathy like to look at paper maps I think it was. Um, but if your destination is heaven, take time to study the route to get there. Mm -hmm. You're not just going to end up there by accident. Half right. chance all of a sudden you made your destination. God's gave us a road map. Now here's the amazing thing about the scriptures. Do I believe everything that has gone on historically through Christianity is written inside the lids of that book? No, I don't. We have various references to things we have no copy of, Brother Sidney. But what we have inside the lids of that book is the exact route to get to heaven. And that is what God has gave us, has left for us. There's no hidden agenda, there's no hidden message, there's no secret code to get to heaven. It is there written plainly. Amen? The church, like the individual, may rise by making stepping stones out of obstacles. If you want to use an excuse to stay where you're at, use your obstacles or stumbling blocks for that, you can or you can use it for a stepping stone. But as long as you use your obstacles and stumbling blocks as an excuse, you will stay exactly where you're at, and you will not gain any ground. And the Bible did say that we are without excuse. And it does talk about 
stumbling blocks there. Amen. God wants us to be victors, not victims. The sword, not the saint. To overcome, not to be overwhelmed. That does not mean there won't be times you won't be overwhelmed, because you will. But if you allow that to be your permanent position, that's not the will of God. Amen. Amen. So, reading today is Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 22. And it says, the first part here is verses 8 through 10, saved through faith. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So saved through faith. Um, I appreciate this verse a lot, and there's a, there's a very specific reason I do, because it describes salvation. Is a gift from God. Amen. And if we're not careful, we have skewed that to be a, a receipt for what we do. And it is not. You will not gain heaven by your works and your good works. You can die a good moral person and go to hell. Mm -hmm. Amen. You can die in your morality. You can pay every bill you have, never tell a lie. Don't take anything that's not yours, and you will die and go to hell. If the blood has not been applied, you cannot go to that city. That is true. That is factual. Amen. So by grace, are you saved? Grace here is the divine influence upon the heart and its reflection in life. And it says, through faith, faith is a persuasion that is moral conviction, especially reliance upon Christ for salvation. And it is the gift of God. It is a present, but it's specifically a sacrifice, a sacrificial gift. What I think is amazing about this, it says, by grace are you saved through faith. I think of like electricity. Electricity is an amazing power. We all like it. We like the benefits from it. But none of us use electricity in its raw form. It cannot come to us except for it come to us through a conduit, mm -hmm. a means of travel. For grace, you're saved through faith. Mm -hmm. You can talk grace all you want. But if you don't have the faith for that grace, it will not come to you. Amen. You have to have faith that that grace is sufficient to save you. Amen. Amen. And when you have that type of faith, we'll go into the next verse here in a moment, you will understand by grace or you saved through faith that it is unmerited that you're saved. Amen. It is not of your own Volition or doing. Amen. And ninth verse said, not of works, lest any man should boast. Works here is an effort or occupation, an act, a deed of doing labor or work. I work for a living. And when I work for a living, I want a paycheck. And I tell them like this, I'm as devoted to my job as long as my paycheck cashes. As soon as they quit giving me a paycheck out of cash, I no longer work for them. Why is that? Because I'm working out my employment for money. That's my expectation. And that's how a lot of people will look at salvation. I'm working out my salvation so I'm owed. You're given Amen. salvation, not of your works. 
Now here's where we also get in trouble. We'll say, okay, then we don't have to have works. You're wrong. You're wrong. Amen. You have to have works. Absolutely. You'll say the Bible's confusing. No, it's not. <clears throat> Your works will not gain you heaven. Only Christ. Amen. But when you accept Christ, you are saved. Well, let me back up. It said not that any man should boast. To boast here means to vaunt, to glory, to joy, to rejoice. And I thought here this was when the Pharisees would say, I fast often. How many times a week? I don't remember. Twice, maybe. Three times. Could have been five times. I just don't remember. But I give tithes and I do this and that. See, that's a boast. That's saying, I've earned my salvation. Amen. Now let me take it to our world. I wear long sleeves all the time. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Dress decent. Dress decent. Because if you count on your long sleeves taking you to heaven, you're going to die of sweat. Amen. Gonna die sweaty, you're gonna die hot. So dress decent. But if you start trying to teach me a salvation compared to my dress like that, I don't want it. Amen. But if you want to talk to me about getting saved and at that point I want to look right, I want it. Amen. Absolutely. Does that make sense what I'm saying? I hope it does. <clears throat> Why is that? Because I really I do care what you do, but don't come to me telling me how safe you are by the stuff you don't do. Because I don't want to hear it. I want to hear how you're saved by the grace of God. Amen. And how you acknowledged one day that you were lost and undone, and that you needed him. Because if it was of works, Brother Mitchell, we would say one day I was lost and undone, and I realized that, so I changed my works, what I was doing. Now I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Still got lost. Mm -hmm. Amen. It says, for we are his workmanship. Workmanship is a product that is fabric or a thing that is made. Created in Christ Jesus. Created means to fabricate something. Amen. Uh, But it says, created under good works. Good is a benefit or beneficial. Works is the same thing now. But it's a beneficial work. It's not a self-work. It is a work of action because of an event. Amen. And it says here, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Ordained, we have a lot of people talk about predestination. There are so many people that are born saved, so many laws, and I'm a sinner because I can't help it, because I was born that way and God ordained me to hell. That's as false as teaching. Amen. As teaching that you can live as good as you can and you'll go to heaven by your works. Both of those are false. The ordination of God is a predestination of how we should live before this world began. Amen. Salvation was put into place before man, as far as I can tell, was put on this earth, Brother Sidney. So this ordination here is a fit up in advance. So God saved us to do good works that he ordained before salvation was a thing on this earth. And we should walk in them, and to walk means to live, to deport oneself, or to follow. So we are saved to do good works. We are not saved by our works. Amen. So don't mistake the two and say I'm saved so I don't have to do anything. You're wasting your time. And don't mistake that I'm saved because I do this because then you're again wasting your time. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. To the next part here is reconciled through Christ. It's Ephesians 2, 11 through 17. It says, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are 
called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands. That at that time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for us, for to make in himself a twain one new man, so making peace. For that he might reconcile both unto God in one by the body of the cross, in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were far off and to them that were nigh. Amen. There was a lot read right there. Amen. And honestly, when I read this, I don't see a lot I can expound upon. Because it's very plain. Uh, Paul didn't write things always that was confusing. Sometimes he wrote things that were hard to understand. According to the Apostle Peter, right? But it didn't mean everything he wrote was hard to understand. It says that you are time past Gentiles. As far as I know, none of us are Jews in here. But if you are, you still only have one way to get to heaven. Amen. And that is Jesus Christ. Amen. But he said that you were Gentiles in the flesh. We were aliens. We were pagans. Most of us, that's what we were. Amen. Who we are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Circumcision, I believe everybody in here knows what it is. And it was given as a promise to Abraham as a means to differentiate between the chosen and the unchosen. But what it became, it became again a work of the flesh. Mm -hmm. They trusted in natural circumcision for their salvation. And they did that up through Christ Amen. and beyond. But the circumcision of the flesh was representative of the circumcision of your heart. Amen. That's what the Bible was talking about, and that's what God gave circumcision for, mm -hmm. to show a natural sense for a spiritual fact. Circumcise your heart. Amen. And then, so these people put their reliance in a fleshly act. Instead of understanding the spiritual truth behind it. Amen. And it says that we were without Christ. Aliens. Aliens were non-participants. Amen. Uh, Connor talked to me. He said, do you believe there was aliens? I said, the Bible said there was aliens. Amen. But I also said that there are aliens. God made them too. But in times past, we uh, were not participants of the grace, of the covenants of God, of the promises of God. And we were strangers uh, from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers of the covenant of promise. A commonwealth is citizenship, a concrete community for a freedom. So we were strangers from that community, but now we are made participants or citizens of that community Amen. through Christ. I was told, I don't know how many commonwealths there are in the United States, but Kentucky is a commonwealth. I think Virginia is a commonwealth. Um, I'm not sure of the others. I'll probably embarrass myself. Pennsylvania, maybe. Pennsylvania. Uh, but a commonwealth is a state that is self-contained, if you will, able to support itself in all functions of life. You do not need anything from the outside world to help sustain yourself, from what I understand of a commonwealth, meaning a state. And if you look at our natural resources here in Kentucky, we don't need help from the outside. 
We have natural gas. We have water, coal, food. We really don't need help from the outside. We would be self-sustaining as a state. The Commonwealth of Israel, they needed no help from the outside. They were self-sustaining as a state without help from the world. So we were aliens from that, but now we're citizens of that. Amen. Amen. Because it says, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. I want to say here that the people who teach that the blood of Christ is a common profane thing. I really struggle. The blood of Christ, again, is what you're saved by. Amen. It is not the per se step to get to salvation. It is the step of salvation. Amen. And without the blood of Christ, you are not an is. There's no shedding of blood. There's no remission of sin. Mm -hmm. Amen. So the blood to me is the most vital thing because it was what's covered our sins Amen. before a holy God. <clears throat> that he won't see us in our works, but he'll see Christ in his works. Amen. Amen. And he's broken down the middle wall of partition. Broken down means to loose, to break, to destroy, or dissolve. And Brother Sidney talked about Ronald Reagan talking to Gorbachev, saying, Gorbachev, tear down this wall. You see, they put a wall up there in Germany, and pretty much every one of us grew up with East and West Germany. But they put that wall up there as a division. But that wall got broke down, and unity was made. Amen. It's the same way in this. That wall has been broke down, Absolutely. and unity has been made. Amen. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, abolishes to render entirely useless. I think that's amazing. To render entirely useless. You know what I find amazing? Is how the holiness church will go back into the Old Testament and hold things strict as law. And they'll take other things from the Old Testament and hold it strict against it. I'm like, how do you... How do you Divide it. Help me understand your stance on what you determine is right. But right here it said he rendered it totally useless. Well, that ain't popular. I know it, but it's still Bible. Mm -hmm. It's not popular, but it is Bible. Amen. But he abolished in his flesh the enmity, and that's the opposition. Amen. The hatred and hostility. Even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make himself a twain, one new man, so making peace. And that he might reconcile both unto God and one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. He came and pe preached peace to you which were far off and them that, them that were nigh. And I want to back up here. It says, the 16th verse, it says that he might reconcile. He cannot force you saved. Amen. You can die lost. Mm -hmm. You can walk away from this. He cannot force you to heaven. You have to want to go. Amen. He paid the price for you to go. He paid the price for me to go. But he will not force you to get there. You have to want to go. Amen. And then the last part here, it's the foundation of victory, Ephesians 2, 18 through 22. For through him we have, but we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and the, of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. 
in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. And I, I put here, I didn't break this down a lot, I just reading that, and I thought about, again, aliens or immigrants, right? I don't think all of us here are pure-blooded Indian, Native American, or the indigenous people of this country. I have it in my family, and no doubt the majority of you have it in yours. But that does not make you a pure-blooded indigenous individual Amen. from North America. Right? The vast majority of us have European in us. vast majority of us. So how did we get here? We immigrated. We immigrated here. Well, my family immigrated here mostly before this was the United States. It was still a British colony. British controlled or Spanish controlled in some places, French controlled in others. My family immigrated here, Brother Sidney. But immigration then, they also integrated to this country. <coughs> what we see today is a lot of people wanting to immigrate to the United States, but they don't want to integrate mm -hmm. to the customs and the foundations of our country. Well, why did I say that? I said that because mm -hmm. this, we have a lot of people that want to go to church and go to church. They immigrate to church. But they don't integrate to the laws of God. Amen. They want to live how they want to live. Mm -hmm. They want patted on the back and told they're doing a great job. I'm glad to see you this Sunday. Amen. We'll see you again Wednesday or Sunday. Good job. Thank you. You look nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's what they want. And they yeah. want to be told, do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. Just come to church. I want to tell you, you can't do that. Amen. Come to church, but you got to change. You want to be a Christian, you've got to change. Amen. You can't be a Christian and not change. I've read all this. Christ didn't pay the price for you to claim to be a Christian or me. It don't matter. Or anyone in here or anyone that will listen to this and it's being recorded to anybody to live how we want, Brother Sidney. Yeah, he didn't do that. He didn't break down the middle wall of partition for us to continue living however we want. Yeah, he didn't do that. He said here we have access by one spirit, not multiple. Amen. And he says we're no more strangers and foreigners, but we're fellow citizens. With the saints. You know where I work at, you cannot get in that place. Nelson worked there for a while. I could tell every one of y'all come with me to work, and I'm the only one that can get through that gate. It is a foreign trade zone. If y'all want to come through, you gotta go through security and pass the checks. I can tell you to come. But for you to walk in where I work at, you have to abide by their rules, be adherent to their policies, and be accepted by giving access. You'll say, well, that's just a job. You're right, it's just a job. <coughs> a menial job. Why would we reflect? Brother Tom knows what I'm talking about as well. Why would we reflect upon eternity to be something different? Mm -hmm. That we think we can get there any which way we want to go. If I can't even walk into my job, the place that I work of employment, Brother Sidney, without adhering to their policy. It's amazing how we do that. 
says, We were built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. And I want to say here, uh, I believe in prophecy a million percent. I really do. But I'm also the mindset of Brother Clarence Root. And Brother Sidney, Sister Esther, you all knew Brother Clarence. I knew Brother Clarence, Brother Mitchell. Brother Clarence was a very no-nonsense kind of guy. Very no nonsense. He didn't. He wasn't very fluffy at all. He said, "Somebody comes and tells me and says the Lord said He'll be with you." He said, "He already told me that in His Word. He told me He'd go with me all the way to the end of the world. Don't come and try to prophesy that to me. Like it's something new." Is what He was getting at. He's already told me that. The Spirit of God can tell you the future, can tell you the present, and can unreveal it to you and be very specific. And I believe in prophecy 100%. But if prophecy does not line up to the Word of God, Amen. it is not prophecy, except for of an individual. Mm -hmm. Amen. And if salvation is built on anything else but Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone, Amen. and if you notice, the apostles didn't change all that, did they? Really, we had no trouble there with the apostles. Maybe some inward issues. But changing the foundation of salvation, you don't see it. Amen. Until you started seeing the apostles die off. And when the apostles died off and the generations that were next to the apostles died off that were witnesses firsthand to Christ and to the teachings of those who were firsthand witnesses to Christ you start seeing a change in the foundation of salvation. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing that happened in the book of Joshua. The generation that followed they adhered generation that was alive and seen it, they adhered. But when they got further away, Brother Sidney, at the end of the book of Judges, it said every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Amen. And we have moved so far away from the initial foundation of salvation. We're living in 2024. And you can in your own eyes say, well, I believe this. And I'm going to live this way. Amen. It does not change the foundation. Foundation is the same. Absolutely. So the destiny of the church is to be light unto this lost and dying world. Our destiny is to adhere to his word. Amen. I want to go to heaven. Amen. Do I take it as serious as I should? I don't think so. I don't think so. But I want to go. And I told him, Sister Lillian, when I got saved, that I'd have drank out of a mud hole that told me that's what it took to go to heaven. Because I got peace. That's how willing I was to be adherent to grace. How willing are we today? How willing am I today? Would I still drink out of a mud hole, Brother Sidney? I don't know. I might say, well, I've learned a few things since then. I may not. <laughs> It'll be worth everything to hear him say, well done. Amen. We've got two places to go, and I will go to one of the two. I know that. Now, I either have eternity to be at peace, or I'll have eternity to think about what I missed. Amen. It's scary. It's reassuring, but scary. Amen. Brother Sidney.
Reconciling those two passages of Scripture, again, salvation is within. Yes. And once we get in with the Lord, if we get saved and get spirit filled, and even if you haven't been spirit filled yet, as far as receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you still got salvation on the inside of you. You've got to work its way out. Amen. And True. that's where we're coming from. That salvation is in here working its way out that other 